October 25th, Saints Crispin and Crispinian. These two glorious martyrs, who were brothers, were born of a distinguished Roman family. They came from Rome to preach the faith in Gaul toward the middle of the 3rd century and took up residence in Soissons. They instructed many in the faith, which they preached publicly during the day. At night, they worked at making shoes, following the example of St. Paul, who recommends that the preachers of Christ imitate him, that is, sustain themselves when necessary by the work of their own hands. The infidels who came to their workshop were charmed by their polite and affable manners and enjoyed coming to ask their services and converse with them. The profound conviction which imbued all they said about Christianity made a strong impression on those who heard them. They remained about forty years in this occupation at Sasson without being troubled, even though they determined many to renounce the cult of the false gods but the time was coming when they were destined to give the most perfect testimony possible to their faith by suffering many and varied tortures and shedding their blood in the year 285 the emperor diocletian sent his vicar maximian into gaul where this tyrant revealed his intentions by ordering the massacre of the entire thevian legion at Sasson, he soon discovered that the progress of the religion of the Nazarene was largely the effect of the presence there of two brothers. When summoned to appear before him, they were not moved by either threats or promises. Maximian, seeing that he could do nothing with them, sent them to his minister, the prefect of Gaul, with orders to spare them no sort of torture. At Sasson, the memory of their torment is still much alive. An abbey was built at the site of the prison where they were enclosed. They were suspended by pulleys and struck with clubs. They were tormented in their hands and mouth with wires, and strips of flesh were cut off their backs. All through this they ceased not to pray. When certain instruments destined for them turned against their tormentors, they were regarded as magicians. They were then attached to millstones and thrown into the river, but the stones detached themselves and they swam to the far shore. A hotbed of fire, molten lead and tar, did not consume them, and they sang hymns to the Lord. A drop of this mixture seemed to have leapt from the fire into the eye of the prefect. Out of his mind with fury, he threw himself into the brazier, and there meant his end. The martyrs were patient and content under these fearful torments, and finished their course by the sword in the year 286. A Christian brother and sister buried their bodies on their own terrain, where later a public oratory was constructed. On this site, the parish priest, St. Peter Fourier, long afterwards established a congregation of teaching sisters, which he founded. Of how many may it be said that they labor in vain, since God is not the end and purpose that inspires the labor? But the wonderful insuccess of the martyrs serves directly to make his glory shine with eternal brilliance.